Good afternoon. Hearty welcome to 17th session of uh, South Asian Online Literary Conference uh, organizing by Sahich Academy and uh, Foundation of Sark Writer, Writers and Literature, POSWAL. And uh, in this uh, 17th session, uh, and this session is devoted for poetry uh, recitation. And uh, this session, is uh, uh, is going to be chaired by uh, the famous uh, uh, Bhutanese uh, uh, poet, uh, none other than Sri Rinjan Rinjanji. Uh, uh, hearty welcome, to, uh, hearty welcome, sir. And uh, and hearty welcome to President of uh, uh, Postwall, Professor uh, uh, Ajit Kaur, ma'am, because of who's uh, committed and uh, uh, relentless commitment i think these are made it uh, made possible thank you so much ma'am now may i request uh, the the chair of uh, this uh, 17th session uh, sri ranjan ranjan ji uh, to uh, start with the uh, welcome note thank you sir yes ma ji yeah kindly go ahead go ahead uh, loving greetings to everyone all over the world all over the world uh, and especially uh creating poets and poetesses uh my deepest gratitude to foundation of South writers and literature literature first of all especially to uh our great mother Adiyarji. thank you so much so much for having me and and uh also, deepest gratitude to Sahita Academy for hosting this uh, very important literary uh, festival. Uh, I am uh, Rinjin Rinjin, a writer, poet, author, and a social activist from Bhutan. Once again, love and greetings from Bhutan to everyone. Now, uh, during this session, I'll call the poets one by one, please introduce yourself and then uh, start reciting your po po poem within uh, about six minutes. Seven minutes. Please stick Seven to minutes time. Each. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. First, I would like to call on my very dear brother, Najibullah Azad from Pakistan. Uh, sorry, Afghanistan. Is Najibullah around? No, uh, I think he's uh, yet to join. I think uh, right now we have uh, uh, in our miss. Um, uh, MP uh, Tamira Manju from uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, may I request him kindly uh, with you? Oh, please, Tamira ji, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Kindly unmute. Yeah, fine. Hi, Bowen. My name is uh, Amira Manju. I am from Sri Lanka. Before I read my poem, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to South Asian Online Literary Conference. We had previously met in, uh, in India at this festival. I still remember its wonderful experience. However, the global epidemic we are currently facing has physically divided us. Despite these difficulties, I would like to express our gratitude to our postal organization for hosting this literary festival online. I am also especially uh, grateful to Sahita Academy for his sponsorship uh, us to meet Fred. Uh, I would also like to use this opportunity to pay my uh, tribute to my literary mother, Madam Ajit Ko, Madam Aparnako is another someone I hold in a high regard. I'd uh, want to express my gratitude to everyone, especially my friend Praveen and Siti. Uh, I am also reminded of my uh, friend Kanchana Priyakanth in Sri Lanka. Without her, I would not uh, have met such great person. 
so now i will share my poetry with you this is an uh, extract from kudu alakusha my most recent book of poems uh, name is tragedy of the asia in our lit- literature sri lanka was considered the uh, prosperous country in asia but today in this poem i will try to describe the current situation facing sri lanka tragedy of the asia magnificent places palace magnificent palace without a king a person who is not a king pretends as a king abolishes human stability this is the tragedy of the asian region with exclusive farmlands and all natural resources has raising the flags on a skin ship exclusive heritage that is you are is ruined what are your achievement this is the tragedy of the asian region great markets massive highways entertainment halls with smile and enjoyment all misleading conceptions cover <clears throat> our own voice what achievements after i am murdered this is the tragedy of tragedy of the asian region magnificent palace without a king a person who is not king pretends a, as a king abolishes human stability this is the tragedy of the asian region thank you very much thank you very much uh, thank you uh, thank you Tam- brother tamira may i now request professor venita uh, uh, introduce yourself and recite your poem professor venita please yeah very good afternoon uh, i am dr vanita retired associate professor from sgtv khalsa college delhi university uh, i am very thankful to sahitya academy and uh, especially ajit karchi who gave me the opportunity to present my poems in south asian literary conference myself i am a poet prose writer critic and translator and also i have edited some major works and uh, i have authored more than 50 books i am a member of uh, many reputed institutions and have participated in many conferences national and international here i will read some of my poems in the given time of 7 minutes i will take not more than 6 minutes uh, uh, i will present a very small poems in a paradigm uh the first one is in war <laughs> poetry does nothing in war poetry does. does nothing in war it observes listens and thinks feels very strongly about the destruction caused by the lethal weapons but the weapons are not dangerous although they cause so much destruction still weapons are not dangerous the weapons are mere metals chemicals atoms and much more like this more dangerous than weapons in war is the thinking in the mind the most dangerous then weapons in war is the thinking in the mind destruction in the eye and celebration of victory much more dangerous than weapons in war is the thought process runs the crusade of destruction the taste of defeating in such times my dear friends you tell me what poetry can do poetry remains helpless picks up and keeps up 
on its palm the minced remains of its trampled flowers before the gunpowder before the rowdism poetry does nothing in war thank you another poem is in this connection i rise my fight is not against the man my fight is not against the man i rise against the hissing snake against the sitting venomer set in the snorting snake's head my war is my fight is not against the man my fight my fight is not against the sea i rise against the horrific whirlpool that strikes harmless ships along with their formidable sails my fight is not against the sea my fight is not against the elephant it is against his wild breakout on seeing feeble and lifeless female turns wild with carnal passion my fight is not against the elephant my fight my fight is not against the man my fight is not against the man against the human it never was against the human it never was i rise against the vanity lying secure in the male's offensive mind my fight is not against the man i rise against the hissing snake in his head in his head and the last still hopeful candid uh, poem is ray Ma'am, I think uh, time is If over, ma'am. If time is over, then it's okay. Oh. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, so much, Professor Vanita Ji, for your lovely, lovely uh, points. Ani, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, Rinjan Rinjan Ji, just one minute. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, the ma'am with the uh, uh, spits. May I know your name, ma'am, because your name is not there. Uh, is not visible in your uh, uh, screen. May I know your name? Ah, uh, who's? No, no, no. Uh, the man with the the uh, dark okay. spats. Read me, read me, read me, read me. Uh, Ma'am, kindly unmute. Yeah. Are you asking? Yeah, Which yeah, I, I'm, I'm asking. Yes. I am Manju Kachuli Tiwari from Nepal. Manju Kachuli Tiwari from thank, Nepal. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, now I would like to kindly go ahead. Now I would like to request uh, Sham Sundar Ji, please. Thank you. Uh, Sham Sundar Ji, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, respected chairperson and uh, honourable Ajit Kaur Ji. and all other participants very good afternoon to everybody at the very outset i would like to introduce myself i am a bangladeshi poet i appeared in the literary arena after 1970 and usually my subjects of poem are the eternal theme of love humanity motherland and nature in addition to poems i love to write short stories travel stories articles and historical research works so far my 46 books have been published out of those 19 books are on poems i would like to read my very small poems few small poems and uh, i would like to read a uh, few of them in bangla also at the very outset i would like to read my first poem the title of this poem is valentine in bangla shakhi ase gaj pala shakhi ase bhumi বৃষ্টি ছিল এই চোখে রাত ছিল ভরা দুখে আর ছিলে তুমি ওই হাতে ছুঁয়ে দিল স্বপ্ন পথ গামী মিষ্টি কিছু আলো ছিল মায়া ভরা দৃষ্টি ছিল সাথে আছি আমি দ্য প্লান্টস 
are witnesses. The lands are also. The rain in the eyes means the night is filled with sorrows. And there are you who have tossed with the hands the dreamer to the path. There is mild, sweet light in the desert. It is full of illusionary vision. And I am with you always. Second poem. Symbol of grip. I have black bays in my heart, not hanging in a dress. The gloom that glows and grows to him and for his grief. Tears is tough at the rock of pain, hands tossed, a grave buried in this heart. Morning castle at the corner of the eyes have dried up today all the tears. My third poem is Ganer Poribidhi in Bangla. Akash chinesi khola kashere niche shuye shuye gulab diye chhe ghran gulapere papri shuye chhe In English, augmenting sense. The sky I have come to know by lying under the open space, the rose gave descent because I have touched the petals of the roses. My third poem is Friend. In Bangla, it is Bondhu. Tumake janai shagotam, shoktir shomukhe mathanoto kori, mugdho noyone, noyono rakhi, judho noy, bondhu tekuchirokal. Akashir Moto Udarota Devo, Josnar Snig Totai, Shohagi Ador, Bristi Haja, Kopale Norum, Ustnohat Reke, Bontuzo di Hau, Tobinir Kum, Tataborat. Friend, welcome and I welcome you. Let me bow my head to driven, uh, divine power. We'll look at the charmed eyes, not for war. Be friend forever. We'll extend generosity like the sky, the beloved cares in the brightest moonlight, keeping soft and warm hands on the drenched forehead. If become print, we'll stay the whole night sleepless. Then uh, another point I would like to read now. The name of the poem is Poran Jurano in Bangla. Duare daralo hotash batash, karnish chayai, shorir juralo, gorom taralo, norom bistir, mayai chwa, thaki parthonai, ebong obohelai. Allying feelings. The gloomy wind was at the door, allied body under a karnish shade. Hot flings is driven away by the illusionary touch of soft rain. Still stay in prayer in the neglecting era. Can I read another one? Very small poem. I, I can't I hear you. Please, I... please go ahead, you have some time. One minute, okay. one minute. Okay, thank you. Uh, marginal nightfall. Hands are still spread in the sky, looking for happiness day and night, finding love stories, looking for the true words of solidarity, Lastly, getting the mirrors of love and the fossil of grief. Finally, the waves of the sea uttered way up and down in the festival on the sandy beach, seen the stack of ice in the heart. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Gaurdi, namaste. That was Sham Sundarji from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, Such lovely points. Thank you so much. And uh, now may, thank I, you. may I call on uh, Ma'am Manju Kanchuli from Nepal, please. Thank you. Namaskar. I am Manju Kanchuli Tiwari from Nepal. I live in Kathmandu. It's my great pleasure to be with you all in this festival. Thank you very much. I would like, like to express my utmost gratitude to Saitya Academy and Force Wall. My special thanks with love and best regards to Madam Ajit Kaur, President of First World, for uh, giving me this chance to appear in this prestigious program. 
Basically, I write poetry, fiction, and plays, and also other genres of literature as well. I'm a clinical psychologist, also a social worker as an activist. Above all, I'm a writer and a life member of Nepal Academy. My 18 books have already been published. One is in press. The rest of them are in the form of manuscripts in my room. I have been writing literature for the last 60 years. Now I'm 73. Oh, I started to write poetry from my very early childhood. I'm proud of being a daughter of a versatile, genius, prominent writer of Nepal, Mr. Bhimnidhi Tiwari. He's no more now. Kasuli is my nickname given to me by my father when I was a child. As a poet, I think poetry never dies. It's immortal and it is beyond any kind of boundaries. I write in both the languages, English and Nepali. Mostly I write poetry in English. I have already given my poetry presentations in different parts of the world, like different states of America, China, India, Bangladesh, and so on. I have interest in research works, resource works and have done a few on women and adolescents. I love poetry. Poetry is my life. Now I'm going to read my poem. The title of this poem is Old Woman. And this poem is originally written in English. An old woman. An old woman peeps through her window. Uh, this is related to after democracy in Nepal. An old woman. An old woman peeps through her window, democracy in her yard, resting under her chin, her beautiful wrinkled hand. A wonderful formless form in peacefulness, chiseling it to boost the aroma of the goddess in her nose, eyes, mouth, and ears. Endurance in rumple, glory in iron crumple, tolerance in reticence, concrete. Is it suffering? Is it bliss? Unknown. One cannot see. One cannot see. It's smeared inside the stone wall of her face. Her vocal cord is shut or perhaps caught long before. She looks beautiful. A beautiful bust of gallantry. A tourist takes its pictures from various angles made of a stone. Perhaps a goddess in the city of the temples, a bestowed honor to lie shut. So suffocating wind into the four wall, is it forever? Is it forever? Is it forever? Thank you. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so, so much, uh, Manjuji from Nepal. Such a lovely poem. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, may I now request our big brother, uh, Ibrahim Wahidji, who has such a lovely heart. And he, he's an excellent guitarist and a singer too. I witnessed that a long time ago. Thank you so much. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I would try and stay within my time limit. 
Uh, I, I wrote this poem a long time ago, probably about uh, 12 years ago. I know I, I didn't introduce myself, but then let me, let me call myself uh, an involuntary writer, uh, a perfectly a non-poet. I'm an academician, a retired politician, uh, doing all sorts of things. Right now, uh, I must thank Sahitya Academy, though, uh, for their Munshi Premsen Fellowship Award in 2008, and Foswell Art Literary Award in 2011. Uh, it's, I'm so grateful that Margie is here today. It's, it's, it's always wonderful to see her. So, back to my poem. Uh, I wrote this probably 10 years ago, and this is the story of a young lady who was contemplating suicide. So she goes and stands in front of a mirror and the, and the mirror starts speaking to her, basically. I mean, in, in the land of poetry, I think anything can speak. So here's the mirror speaking. But before you, many a decent woman lived in this world. In her, in her was the spirit that made life breathe. She was the zephyr that blew through times of peace. She created great monuments to the grandeur of humanity. She was the one that ended wars. She was the poetry that lightened hearts. She made music for the weary. She cared for the heart, the downtrodden and the poor. She was the anthem of gold that uplifted her king. She made her man emperor. She glorified herself and her partner and her children. She was a woman. But before you, Many a sweet girl lived on this great earth. She created an honorable man out of care. She slipped delicately into a man's consciousness and made him kind. She destroyed the beast in him. She created loving human spirits. She was, after all, the soul of life. Before you lived many a wonderful woman. She took a man's hand and walked with him. She led him to bed after a hard day's work. She was always the first to wish him good morning. She was, after all, what made life complete. Before you, in front of you, I place an invitation. Listen to me, my daughter reflection. Do you want to be a woman? Do you want to be the soul of life? Do you want to be the better half of a full life? If so, listen to me carefully. Live life according to what you know to be right and wrong. Do not let yourself be dragged through the cheapness of smaller people. Follow your heart. Follow freedom. Follow peace. Follow love and not hate. Follow encouragement and not fear. Except that you can sometimes make mistakes. Be willing to correct your own mistakes. Above all, be yourself. Do not judge yourself in glass, my daughter. Value yourself in what you can do. Walk away from me. Walk away from this mirror right now. Because before you is an entire world of beauty, peace, and happiness. Unfortunately, she didn't listen to the mirror. Sad. I wish more people did. Um, here's another one. And uh, they say that, you know, once an academician, always one. I'm sure Professor Vanita will agree with me. This is something about education. Education is something that always fascinates us. It's become such a beautiful commodity these days. Have you ever wondered why the rich man's child goes to university? Have you ever wondered why he always goes to a foreign one at that? Or there's really nothing to wonder or even get surprised about that. It's because our local joints are subsidized. If they don't do what is asked, chastised. Have you ever wondered, ever wondered what that what is asked is all about? Have you ever wondered and sent your child there without a doubt? Why is that subsidy often a sex free charity? Or well, there's really nothing to wonder or even get flummoxed about because the local ones create slaves. Servants to the great ones, the haves, PAs, secretaries, and tea room ladies, who, if they don't do what is asked, 
get chastised? But have you ever wondered what the rich man's kid learns at university? Have you ever wondered what the rich man's kid learns at university? Have you ever wondered what he learns at that great foreign university? For he too learns to do what is taught and not question foreign values without doubt. And if he doesn't do what is asked, also get chastised. About that, have you wondered? Has he wondered? Have they wondered? And I leave the question open. But I think, uh, I think Rinzin, that's all I have for you today. I think I've kept well within my time limits. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's always an honor and a pleasure to share the same platform with you. And uh, Margie tells me that we might probably have uh, a vis-a-vis -vis or face-to-face -face next year. If so, looking forward to meet you then. Until then, I've, I've left you my email address in the chat. If anyone's uh, you know, out there who wants to keep in touch, please do so. Look at the chat. My email address is in there. I'll be honored to get one from you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, big brother Wahid from Maldives. Such excellent points. I can hardly breathe. You know, I could hardly breathe while you're <laughs> reciting. Such beautiful points. Uh, we are supposed to be 11 points here, but I think uh, some of them are not around. So I think I'll go next. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's your turn. <laughs> first, a light one, a light point. Uh, the title is From the Head or the Heart. It's about uh, having to write poems from the heart, not from the head. I love to write, but I often have to fight. Firstly, for the right climb, and then for the right time. Often the situation seems perfect, yet out of nowhere arises a conflict of either tradition, culture, or norms, or faith and politics in various forms. I lose my grip on my pen, for with brains my right can't gain. Instantly, my heart rescues the misled brain crushing all ignorant thoughts down the drain. All judgments disintegrate with shame. Freedom I gain from excuses lame. With boundless joy, I pick up my pain again and write from my heart with ease again. Uh, this is a light one. Now, uh, I would like to recite one uh, on behalf of the of all the good wives who tolerate their tormenting husbands. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's for all those good, good wives. Uh, this is based on a real incident uh, which, have, which took place in a, uh, uh, at an international uh, airport a couple of years ago. So the title is Slavery in Sacred Matrimony. Rush hour at an international airport a well-built man with just a, just a plastic file. About an eight-year-old boy by his side. The wife follows with an infant in her left and a heavily burdened trolley in her right. Bring it, the husband casually commands. The lady blushes at her husband's act. Wives her sweaty forehead with her dress. Adjusts the infant in her left pushes the trolley hard with her right and hurries sheepishly after her man. Her man, my heart sank at the sight. About it all, nothing seemed right. A woman was at life's merciless plight. As a mother, she couldn't fight. As a wife, she didn't demand her right. And as an onlooker, I lost my light. If such be a relationship sacred, I can't help it if I get shaken. Not that I'm trying to be a saint, nor that I want to act a hero. Just that it makes my heart go pent for the act on humanity scores a flat zero. In my cramped up economic class seat, the incident's memory, I try to cheat. 
swiftly opting to get a cheap ignorant sleep, only to find my heart at the incident weep. As I recall the lady, lady's plight again, I wonder why such man conduct thus in vain. Thank you so much. Uh, since we have uh, some time left, I would like to uh, request Professor uh, Vanita Ji to rec uh, recite one or two points. I'm really ah, sorry for having to cut you off because I thought other friends would, <laughs> friends would join. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, Thank Professor Vanita Ji. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, I'll read one of my poems. Uh, as I was uh, about to read previously, the title is Ray. And one thing I ever, uh, would like to share with you, I'm a Punjabi poet, basically. So this poem is translated by Professor Tejwan Singhil right. in, in English. So the title is Ray. The room is densely dark. The room is densely dark. The night is of the crescent moon. Closed is the door. The sun is about to rise. Its first ray, closed is the door. The sun is about to rise. Its first ray will give its knock pretty soon. She knows in full what the night holds. She knows in full what the night holds, pain, tears, sighs, many a troubling sight, sadness, fear, all hold out enough of fright. Of the whole world and the entire sky, the room is emblem for the ray's light. The room is emblem for the ray's light, sure of the persistence it claims to have. Sure of the persistence it claims to have and the forbearance it thinks to imbibe. Uh, and for the forbearance it thinks to imbibe through cracks in the walls around, it enters the portals of the mind itself. It enters the portals of the mind itself and claims to turn it transcendent uh, and uh, transcendent, rayless, and even rarefied. In the room, filled with moonless dark, like a glow worm that twinkles around, dazzles the ray, emitting transcendent light, like a glow worm that twinkles around, dazzles the ray, emitting transcendent light. Uh, is it okay or uh, I should read one more? As you say. Uh, one, one more, please. And then Mr. Shanji next, followed by Mr. Thamira. Okay. Uh, so the last poem is, um, it's about poem. Fondly, I begin to compose a poem. Fondly, I begin to compose a poem, but to tell me what I was not aware of, it held back my mind and thus said, life is not written, it is lived in full. Unquote. You will trace letters all of black in their contours will pour meanings or you will clutch at the very dark. Oh, silly one, scriptures are there to spread light all around and make easy the journey of life. Come on, leave jotting of letters. Let me teach you how to read poetry. Wow. <laughs> let me teach, let me teach you how to read poetry, how to grasp it alive and really be it. On hearing poems, such divine words, pen dropped, letters were forgotten, life changed into 
poetry itself. As my previous speaker has said, life is poetry. Life changed into poetry itself. Now, poetry is alive and throbs in full. Now, the poetry is alive and throbs in full. Thank you so much. Beautiful, uh, beautiful, Professor. Thank you so much. So much. Uh, now, I welcome Shanji back again. Thank you. Uh, the title of this poem is uh, Find It Out. All are not good friends. Not every word is a talk. Some people are inhuman to some extent. So find out friends from among them. Not all people are human beings. Not all people are poets. As such, not all poems are poems. Find out the poem from those unpoetical ones. And the final one, feelings. Friends in one hand and enemies in the other. Then stay in the midst as victims of suffering, looking at the true pain of both eyes. Only pure, impure perversion is there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so so much for sharing your lovely poems, uh, Mr. Shamji. Uh, next, brother Thami, uh, Thamira. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Title of uh, this poem is Gunshot. O heroes who protected the country, listen to a song that is sorrowful. O heroes, save the blessed land with great difficulties. However, the result was clearing the roads and washing the dirt in drains. Who actually ordered to you to sell off your tourism? Great war heroes, provide imminence service in the world. However, you were left on the roads, cleaning dirt and drains. Who actually ordered you to sell off your policium? O oh, heroes, who protect the country, listen to a patriotic melody and go straight to certain palace and open fire. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Thamira. Uh, uh, Didi Manju Kanchuli, please, would you like to recite one more poem? Me again? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read another poem. Thank but you. I was not sure I will get chance to read the another one. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and next, Brother Wahid, <laughs> have your poem ready if you would like to. Days in the life. Very nice. I, I'm enjoying this program very much. Thank you again. Days in the Light, Life. The title of this poem is Days in the Life. Either from stained clothes, I would scrub the dirt of superstition as I stayed home, or I would put to pitch into the drain full on the plate, the discards of pros and con. In, in, the, in that way, scrubbing my own environs clean. Either I would play with saffron, aloe, salt, sugar white, vegetable green in the kitchen, dipping my fingers to the art of that experiment or with sweet, sharp needle, stitch fraying divides so as just to strengthen the relationship. To make our house beautiful with my hands, my rhododendron palms, I would scrub it clean every evening there with a rainbow bearing brush. I would paint the limited sky of Mount Everest above my own. Every day I would be busy somewhere 
in the library, somewhere in the laboratory, somewhere only with only unlined paper and pen, somewhere in the educational institutions, there with the mission of adding bricks layer by layer to that basic, basic foundation. In our rotten every evening, I would switch on light drawn from the clear Himalayan stream, electric light of unplanted crops, electric light of unplanted crops in the plains and terraces on such an evening like a swallow through flying everywhere to my one small nest, I would return drawn by thoughts of my fledglings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, Manju Didi. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much, third person. <laughs> the, next, I would like to uh, welcome back big brother Wahid. And after, after Wahid Ji, I, I'll recite a poem. And then our friends, kindly prepare your own poems. We'll, maybe most probably we'll go for a third round. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, brother. It's, uh, I mean, you're doing this wonderful job being chair of this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, all I have are a few irreverent questions for you. So let me start. Irreverent questions. Does love really matter as a power or desire couched in couplets of shyery, lauded and applauded? Or does it last a little longer without rhyme? or even reason when flowing in your spirit as the light forever serene? Does justice really work in the hands of some judges like scalpels with surgeons or knives in the hands of children? Or would it serve us better another time, another place when consciousness judges itself and screams or rests in peace? Does mercy really matter as a gift or a blessing to be withheld or to be granted at the whim of a leader? Could its meaning be much sweeter when it rains from the sky, unclouded by doubt, bountiful, never ending. Does faith really matter? Does faith really matter as a banner or a label penned in Latin or in Arabic, written in Pali or in Sanskrit? Or is it so much better without sound, without form, when cradled in your soul, silenced of names, and thus forever strong. Thank you. Excellent. Just stunning, brother. Big brother Wahid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. your Thank you. point. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'll take the opportunity to recite. Why not? Oh, Why not? Please. Thank you so Please much. Please go ahead. Uh, the title is Beyond the Mundane. In the deep silence of the night, when only the stars above are bright, and sweet intoxicating sleep rescues tired souls, hefty queries in my heart build holes. Yet another opportune day is lost, pursuing mundane goals at all costs. Ignorantly casting away most deeds human only to remorsefully traverse the night in pain, clinging to shrewd friends full of jealousy and ungrateful relatives devoid of loyalty, with love trying to extinguish all enmity, yet always short of attaining human royalty. Human royalty, I seek not the crown of a deity, nor name or fame any grandeur but just life without any slander, 
Let love bloom like a bird in spring. Let compassion see the summer's bliss. Let tolerance swallow the false disgrace, for we shall still sow wheat in winter's cold. Hope shall ripe as the wheat braves, the winter still to warmer spring. Joyous summer, we shall rejoice, uh, we, we shall all rejoice, needless to care what autumn and winter brings again. Thank you so much. Uh, so, next, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, our host, brother, more, would you like, yes, Maji? More, 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 read, more, more. Yeah, yes, no, Maji. I'm saying, uh, read, uh, present some more poems. Some, Some more points. points. <laughs> oh, yes. If uh, possible. So, uh, Professor Vanetta, would you like to recite one more point? Oh, you. Yes. Me. No, no. Yes. Mam is saying you. Uh, Rinjinji, <laughs> uh, Mam is asking you to present. Okay. Again, I'll, uh, I'll recite one. Also dedicated to women, uh, trying to protect women's rights. <laughs> so, I love women. <laughs> So as the night quivered, that's the title of the poem. In the darkness of the night, at the falling of one's sight, the branches of a tree quiver, making me with fear shiver. It wasn't the branches will to quiver and frighten me to make me shiver. It was the unseen wind that made them quiver while for nothing with fear I quiver. Just then I hear someone knocking at the front door at an hour shocking. My landlady was trembling by the door as if stuck by the lightning to the floor. Ruffled hair and a solemn face shy with fear clear in her black left eye told the story of a drunk husband's cruelty clear. No words were required to explain her fear. She hurriedly uttered her husband's name through a quivering voice full of shame. It's okay, please come in, I quickly said. Head her and offer her a warm bed. Back in my own, back in my own bed, I couldn't sleep. From the next door came her quivering whip. Yes. And branches in the tree quivered again as I sympathized the woman in pain. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Maji. Thank you. Uh, Professor Veneta Ji. Ji, uh, it's uh, the poem about life. Life. Uh, again, translated by Professor Tejwan Singhil, professor in English, retired professor. So, the life. When thrown down, it leaps upward. When thrown down, it leaps upward, dropped somewhere, it gets picked up somewhere. Somewhere it breaks, turns whole at another place. At one place, it fragments. At another place, at another it turns into one. Its point of departure differs from where it reaches. Someone turns his back on it, another lands at full support. Should I read? No, 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 please, please, carry on. Okay. Carry on. okay. Uh, its point of departure differs from where it reaches. Someone turns his back on it, another lends it full support, denoted negative at one place, connoted positive at another. Somewhere it descends, but ascends at another place. This is the cycle life observes. This is the cycle life observes. Thank you so much. Just lovely, Professor. Just lovely. Uh, since we have time, I would like to invite Brother Kamira next. Uh, 
At the same time, I would like to request our host uh, here. Would you like to uh, recite a poem of your own? If you do, you can go after <laughs> Hamidaji. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll present because I'm really moved by the Professor Varitaji's uh, okay. poetry. I, at so, the so end, I will give, give, give you the, the conclusion. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, Brother Thamira, please. Are you ready? Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. My uh, poet is poet. The develop, the de to develop employment opportunities, more and more and provide some assistance with whatever you possess. With heavy darkness in the evening, with heavy cold weather sleeping on the ground, in the night not even a cup of tea as food for me. Provide some assistance with whatever you possess. Did, a, did yeah. everything from morning to evening. Spending the whatever I had. Thinking only about your happiness. Whenever you see this artist again. Provide some assistance for my heart. Uh, HS. Although there are no tears. Provide some assistance with whatever you possess. Although I could pass away or you could pass away, take my poem to teach your children about the sun and the earth. Provide some assistance with whatever you possess. You to further develop employment, provide some assistance with whatever you possess for you to see again this poor artist. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Thamira. Thank you so much. Next, may I request uh, Brother Sham Sundarji to recite one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I would like to dedicate my this poem to uh, Ojit Kaur, ma'am. The title of this poem is uh, The Eternal Feeling. The Eternal Feeling. Not because one gets new friends. Faith sleeps untroubled with old ones. Even though he's devastated, there is courage in the heart. The clock does not end the way path in search of security around, but do not get granted. Heart is in broken rep, in practice of constant grief. The sky remains usually weeping. Can I read another one? Yeah. Yeah, please. Please, please. Okay, thank you. The curse. The rain said, gusty wind. So much water I blessed. But you have not got wet. The magic that you know, someday you will cry for scarcity of water. Someday you will cry for scarcity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother, brother Sham Sundarji. Thank you so thank you so much for your for sharing your lovely poems. Uh next thank may you. I request Didi Manju to recite one, please. Okay, thank you. The title of this poem is Leaves, L-E-A-V-E-S, Leaves. A scenario of landscape with a line of a smile in discretion. The fallen leaves dry out, become humus. The total input to the poplar roots. A concrete trunk upon it, abstract leaves sprout wooing words as smooth as the petals of hands, like machinery output in industrial towns. Dashes of the fans breeze, bitter typhoon of the chimney fumes, the trunk breaths to its bark 
before spring, unseen leaves in the branches in the winter walls. A visual world in a newborn leaf in void, in abstraction, a delusion is smoothly wiped out by brain waves in compassion. A divided stump in convalescence, mooted by manure and water in the Senate in coalition, will see the genuine leaves when the season comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, obviously, our big brother, brother Wahid, please welcome back again. Thank you. Oh, good heavens. Now, where do I go? Okay. Let me do something slightly different. Uh, this is for all of you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a little song, actually. Okay. Please, kindly. Right. So, <laughs> I'm, 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 no, no, I'm not going to sing it. I need my guitar for that. I don't have it. With Would me. you sing this song? I, I, just, I, I, I don't know. I forgot the tune. <laughs> Maybe next time. You know, um, yesterday I did, though. It goes like this. When life makes you fall, just sing a sing a hope. When life makes you fall, just get up and walk again. Just sing a song of hope, a song of wisdom and of happiness. Don't sit there and mope. Fill your life with his greatness. Just heed that great call. Be yourself. Stand tall. When the day is laid to rest, don't let it just float away, saying it's all for the best, it won't ever come again. But just say to yourself, when life makes you fall, just get up and walk again. When the sun sets in the west, as it happens anyway, it just takes a little rest. It will rise up again. Just say to yourself, when life makes you fall, just get up and walk again. When the birds go to nest as the day just goes by, their bellies fully and duly blessed with some God-given grain, just say to yourself, when life makes you fall, just get up and walk again. Just sing a song of hope, a song of wisdom and of happiness. Don't sit there and mope. Fill your life with his greatness. Just heed that great call. Be yourself. Stand tall. When life makes you fall, just get up and walk again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you for sharing such a motivating point. Yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, obviously, it looks like I have to decide one point. Uh, since we have about uh, eight, nine minutes, uh, may I request our host? To recite a poem? <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not going to recite a poem, but I'll conclude uh, this session with my uh, inner thoughts. Okay. Um, uh, between that, uh, brother, since we have about uh, seven minutes or so, maybe request uh, Maji to say a few words because uh, we are dying to hear you. You know, uh, you know, like we really miss you. So, Ma Maji, agar up. Please. Rinjan, I love you. <laughs> the biggest poem. <laughs> Come on, look. This pandemic has uh, separated us uh, and uh, forced us away from each other. I cannot hug you. I wish, how I wish I could hug you. Hug all of you. <laughs> Next time, probably. Next year, hopefully. We'll always, we'll all, uh, all be happy to each other. Yes, Mother. Thank, thank, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. We have been dying to hear you. And obviously, uh, 
the same think, here, uh, the uh, same uh, here. We really uh, want to want to help you, but the pandemic is keeping us away. Yes, brother. Yeah, Ibrahim Wahidji would like to say something. Yes, sir. Please, please kindly. Please. Kindly. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, since I've sat through three or four sessions already at this conference, I think we must uh, acknowledge that uh, our, our brother Renzin Renzin did okay. such a wonderful job as chair during this session. You know, with, with such wonderful time management, with such a beautiful sense of humor, you know, and uh, I, I know I'm, I'm deeply filled with, with love and appreciation. And I think uh, this calls for a, a round of applause for our friend Rinzin Rinzin, our brother Rinzin Rinzin from Bhutan, Tash Dilek. And uh, I, 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 I call for a round of applause, please. Thank you. Uh, now I, I would like to resign from the chair, chair uh, of the chair and hand it over to our first uh, brother. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so, so thank, much. Brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Rinjin Rinjin uh, Ji from Bhutan. As I'm just adding uh, to the what uh, uh, Ibrahim Wahid Ji said, because your, 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 the name of our chair is uh, Renzin because it, it means raising and he has fulfilled the, the meaning of his name. So thank you so much uh, uh, Renjin Renjin Ji for uh, uh, conducting uh, this poetry session in a wonderful way. But I, I, as, I, as I told you that I was really moved uh, uh, by the poetry uh, recitation of Professor Vanita Ji. And I said, I thought, okay, in, 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 in continuation to the, what ma'am said, my thought goes like this. My war with the letters, <laughs> letters, akshara. My war with letters never put me down so far because I'm not a poet. <laughs> because I'm not a poet, wow. but I'm a human being. Wow. Wow. Because I'm human being, the reason because I become I became wet by the rain of nectar wow. and uh, with which I was surrounded by the cosmic rays. Wow. Beautiful. Okay. Most beautiful. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so beautiful. much. Thank you so much. Uh, I, 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 I thank uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. K. Srinivas Rauji, Secretary, Sahitya Academy, and uh, Professor uh, Ajit Kaur Ma, the President of Foswal. Uh, I sincerely thank all, all the participants for uh, sparing your valuable time with us. And uh, before I sign off, it's my sincere uh, uh, responsibility, uh, my, my responsibility to sincerely thank all our viewers for uh, joining uh, with us at this juncture and uh, encouraging us to do many more uh, literary events. Thank you so much. And uh, we may be able to see you in the next uh, session. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.